Hey y'all, it's Andrea here again at VW Family Farm. Welcome back. I am getting some jobs done in the garden today and in the herb beds and I thought I'd bring y'all along with me. in front of my sugar snap peas. I'm picking those and then I'm gonna be preserving those for the winter. Um, I have tried these three different ways so far this year. First way was, because this is the first time I've really grown these successfully and had enough to do anything with. So the first time I did nothing to them. I just washed them and I cooked them. I snapped just the, the blossom end off of it. That's it. Uh, it was a mouthful of strings. I thought they were gonna be great, but the tiny, tiny ones were okay, I guess, but they were still a little stringy. But for the most part, they were not good. Second way, Emily and I sat there and strung them. We snapped off and did the strings off of every single one and uh, cooked some of them that way. And they were still stringy because apparently they have a string on both sides. Um, I guess you could possibly string them enough to cook them whole, but honestly, I'm really not sure because even the small tender ones, once we boiled those is what I'm talking about, they were still very stringy. I don't know if they just get fibrous all the way through on the uh, outer shell when you boil them. I'm not sure, but they were just very stringy and bleh. We didn't like them. The third way, I sat there and so I actually have cooked these four ways. I'm gonna back up. I've cooked these four different ways. The third way was we strung them and actually took really mature ones and got the English peas out of the middle. Those were good, but it took a whole, whole bunch of them to get a few peas. I wound up canning. I did a ton of peas and I wound up with four pints. That was a lot of work. Hours of shelling because they're kind of hard to shell for four pints and I was like I just wasted a bunch of the shell which if you know about sugar snaps the shell is good to eat if you eat it fresh they come in like veggie trays and stuff we stand out here and eat them off the vine they're great so I thought there's got to be a way to eat them like that and I don't know why I didn't think of stir fry until my brother-in-law which we talked about before Uncle Mike he said they've lived in Japan because he was in the Navy and he said you know in Japan they throw those in and cook them whole and I thought why did I think of that I buy stir fry mixes that have sugar snaps in them whole. Well, when you stir fry them, they don't get stringy like you do. they do when you boil them. I snapped the ends off and strung them a little bit, but for the most part, uh, they just don't get as stringy when you toss them in your stir fry. So what I'm gonna do is pick what's left here. I'm gonna blanch them for just a few seconds and let them drain really good, and I'm just gonna freeze them whole for stir fry because I threw them in some stir fry the other night with some radishes and squash. And by the way, sauteed radishes are really good. I'd been hearing people talk about roasted radishes. Well, sauteed ones are good too. And some of these sugar snaps, and I put a little coconut aminos on them and it was delicious. A little bit of oil in the pan. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna finish this up and then I'm gonna take y'all and show you my herb beds. It's full on herb time. It's time to harvest some herbs and I'm gonna tell you about a great book and I'm gonna tell you um, <clears throat> what I plan to do with some of my herbs. I've never grown sugar snaps as successfully as I did this year. And one thing I noticed is they built up a little bit more each picking until last week was like the mother load. I got almost a half bushel off these two little cattle panels. Um, and now this week, a week later, they've really dwindled. I figure this is probably it. My plants are turning yellow. They're a cool weather plant, so they don't like hot weather and it's getting really hot here and long days and they're just more of a spring and fall crop. So I figure they're about done until later in the season. But that's okay. By the time stuff is done, I'm usually starting to get tired of it. So we'll pick these back up again in the fall probably. All right, y'all. I am out here in my herb beds, which I don't show y'all my herb beds that much. I don't get to spend as much time with my herbs as I want to. Um, 
doing stuff with them, making them into stuff. That's one of my goals with scaling back a little bit on some of the animals is that's one thing I really want to get more into. But I do have lots of herbs growing and if you're like me, you've got a lot of things growing but then when it gets time, everything's ready at one time and you're like, I don't know what to do with all these things and so sometimes they just kind of go unused. That's been me in the past with herbs because I can get them to grow and a lot of herbs grow like crazy but then it's like, now what? So I wanted to show y'all this book for one thing. Um, Amy Fuel sent me this book. It's the Homesteaders Herbal Companion. And I've been collecting herb books for a while now. Some of you have sent me some that I love. Um, but I gotta tell y'all, this might be the easiest to understand book I've ever read on herbs. It's in common people's terms and it's about common herbs that uh, you're probably already growing. And it's the common herbs that if you're not growing, you should be, and what to do with them after you grow them. It's about, um, it says, choose the five best herbs to grow, make soap, salves, tinctures. This is about growing herbs and what to do with them, but not just for yourself, but for your kids, for your livestock, around your homestead. It's really a good book. So I wanted to mention it to y'all. I, I brought this out here with me because I've been looking at it today as I've been preparing to come harvest some of my herbs. Now, I'm gonna dry herbs and make them into teas and just dried herbs to do things later with. Like you could make a tincture or whatever you want to later. But for now, I'm just gonna dry them. And you can do that a couple different ways. There's people that say put them in a brown paper sack in a trunk of a car. There's people that say hang them up. Now, if you hang them up, I've done that in the past, don't get too big of a clump because I was reading in here and it's actually happened to me. If you get too big of a clump hanging up, they can't get enough airflow and they're gonna mold in the middle and then you're gonna be using moldy herbs. That's not good. So if you're gonna hang them up, hang them in small bunches. Um, I'm actually gonna use my dehydrator because last year Ben was gracious enough to let me get a good dehydrator. I've had the round ones from like Walmart for years, but I actually bought a good one. It's a five tray Excalibur that I, I'm getting nothing for telling you about, but I would highly recommend it. I love it so much. It does a good job. So I am just going to harvest one thing at a time. I could probably dry multiple herbs, but I don't want things like mint taking on the flavor of oregano and stuff if I dry them together. So I'm just gonna harvest one thing a day. It says they can take anywhere from like 30 minutes to four hours to dry. So I'm just gonna harvest one thing a day and pop it in probably in the afternoon time. Um, and in this book, it tells you to wash them, pat them dry, and then put them in your dehydrator, or there's an oven method, or all kinds of methods. I'm gonna be honest, I'm probably not gonna wash mine because we garden organically. Um, we're not surrounded by farm fields that they're gonna get overspray or anything on them. So I'm really not too concerned about washing them and sometimes washing something and then getting it to dry back good is hard. So if these look dirty, I might rinse them, but probably not. But you use your own judgment. The official recommendation is to wash them. Um, and I wanted to mention Amy Fuel, if you don't know who she is, I meant to say this a while ago, she's one of the founders, if not the founder, I really am not sure, of the Homesteaders of America Conference, which is the one out in Virginia. So, um, and Joel Salatin actually wrote the foreword to this book and to her new book that's about keeping chickens. So, um, she didn't tell me I had to say anything about this book or anything, but I wanted to because I really, really do like it. I'll try to see if I can find a link for this book. I think it's on Amazon, I'm pretty sure. So anyway, I'm gonna get to harvesting. I've got oregano, parsley, and sage in this bed. I've got lemon balm, um, some things like that. So I'm just gonna pick something today and harvest it and take it in and start drying it. And then we're gonna move on to some other beds. I'm gonna show you what I got going on. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and harvest sage today. I clipped some more in this basket. Uh, that's a lot of sage once I get that dried and crumbled up. Um, so I don't use sage a ton, but I do use it like in sausage seasoning and it's really good in dressing for Thanksgiving and stuff. Um, I'm not gonna show you me harvesting it because honestly I'm a newbie to it. And if you harvest too much off a plant at one time, you stunt the plant or you set it back and you can kill your plant. So just be careful. This book will actually tell you kind of how to go about that. I'm just kind of winging it because that's kind of my personality. So hoping for the best. 
this sage has went crazy so i'm feeling like it's going to be hard to kill really um so anyway that's what i'm harvesting for today and then the next couple days i'll come out and probably harvest um some oregano some lemon balm and possibly some parsley if i can find some but it's this is my parsley it's huge and it's bolted so so far my herbs over the last few years especially these herbs these culinary herbs they'll bolt like that and then their seed will sprinkle and then they'll grow a whole new crop up so i've not had to replant those yet they've grown for several years now so i'm not too concerned about killing those but if you are about something special you have just be careful okay while we're talking herbs i wanted to show y'all my rosemary bush back here it is several several years old and it is rocking it's it's like a bush it is like a shrub honestly it's never died um i've never had it do this before um especially in a bed but it's in the ground and it's just it just keeps growing so i'm just letting it do its thing okay these are my project for the next few minutes this is a strawberry bed and it keeps growing these things and they're covered in little prickly things and it hurts so thankfully ben's loaned me some gloves i'm gonna get these out of there so that the strawberries can grow a little bit and then i'm gonna move on to the other two that are full of herbs and i'll show you what's in them all right now that i got that bed cleaned out i want to show you what's in it along with the strawberries all right, so I've got whorehound, valerian over here, right there. And then that, that is mullein. All right, so here's another one of my herb beds. And as you can see, it's been taken over by mint. So mint's another thing that this week I'm gonna be drying and cutting this way, way back. I don't think I'll kill it, because I don't know if you can kill mint. But I've got little herbs I planted in here I want to find in amongst all this mint and grass, and then I'll show you what they are. Okay, more herbs recovered from the Bermuda grass. I've got chamomile. Come free and right over there is yarrow or yarrow and then Emily's got all kinds of little flowers coming up here in here wildflowers and dahlias and uh, as you can see I choked the mint way back I really don't think you can kill mint even if you try so I'm not too worried about it and then on to the third bed. Look over here. More mint. Oh yes, more mint. I'm gonna start cleaning this bed up and show you what's in here. Okay, I got this one fixed up too. Let me show you what's in here. We've got bergamot. It's doing good. I got all these little herbs and these tires at Baker Creek at the Spring Planting Festival. They're doing great. I've got that's a patchouli plant in amongst all of Emily's flowers. And I've got a skullcap plant growing because I bought a lot of these things when I was getting into herbs and so I decided to try and grow them. All right guys, I'm about done for the day. I'm about to weed this strawberry bed and then I am done and calling it quits. I've had a long day. If you haven't checked your herbs lately, give them a look. They might need a little weeding around them to let them, as you can see, I didn't get all the grass out but you might need to weed a little bit here's my helper might need to weed a little bit to let the herbs grow and then check that book out because i'm not getting anything for telling you all that it's just a really awesome book that you might find helpful because sometimes herbs are over my head and i just need someone to say grow these things do this with them anyway i'll see you later i'm fixing to give her a job to do and we'll catch you guys tomorrow god bless